highlighted some of those things, and I'm not going to highlight everything, but as you know, yesterday we started creating a web, uh, a web of the 1920s. All you have to do is just add on to that, you know? There's a bunch of things on here that are not on there. And we talked about the Harlem Renaissance, we talked about um, the Jazz Age and, age and so forth, but there's a whole nother, like, I guess, bubble that could be put on there that has to do with music as well. That's not Af related specifically to African Americans, you know, and, and the Harlem Renaissance. So. <clears throat> so what was going on? What was going on in the 1920s besides uh, the things that we already discussed? Can anybody tell me? Don't all raise your hands at once. Go ahead. Um, yeah, okay, so there are movies. So let's, let's talk about entertainment. So in, in your guide here, there's a couple different categories. Um, categories are good because then you can go through there, you can, you can write in the SRS, David. Hollywood became a lot more like uh, Yeah, Hollywood actually started to be, kind of grow during this time period, okay? So we'll get back to that in a second. Let's, let's do one thing at a time. So you said movies, right? When they first originally created these, they weren't really called movies, what were they called? They were films, and they were silent. Okay, so how did you know what was going on in these films? Someone had to stop and show you like the black like card. With, like, the Sometimes they would, they would have little cards. Sometimes they would have captions, you know, like kind of, you know, in today's like cartoons and stuff like that. And they'd be really dramatic, so you could, you could see what was going on. So, oh, you know, the faces and whatever. Um, but in the 1920s, and we were talking about a birth of a nation, remember yesterday? I, I don't know if I mentioned that in your class, but the birth of a nation was the Ku Klux Klan video. Did I tell you guys about that? Okay. So that was one of the first blockbuster films, silent films ever. I mean, imagine that, right? But back during that time period, a lot of people felt like that. So in the 1920s, as we were saying, with the influx of uh, the Ku Klux Klan and so forth, that was just one thing. With movies, something else came about in the 1920s, and back in 1927. So you had silent films up to 1927. Then what happened? All right, so what, what's the difference between a talkie and a silent film? Okay, so it was more like today's movies, right? The people that were speaking, sound was now being put into the, the films themselves. Okay? And so the first talkie was called the Jazz Singer. It's right here. That would be an SRF if you needed one. Okay? Besides movies being something, and remember, back in the 1880s, we were talking about people working in factories 12, 14 hours a day, no breaks whatsoever. But by this time, it was a little more relaxed. People had a little bit more leisure time to be able to do these things. So they went to the movies, okay? or the talkies, or the silent films still going on. What else did they do, David? Sports. sports. What kind of sports were popular in the 1920s? Baseball. baseball. This is when baseball became America's national sport. We all tend to think it's football. It's not. Baseball historically has been America's game. Um, yeah. And also at the time when it was starting, it was also segregated too. Absolutely. And that's going to change in the 1940s with who? Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson. There's a movie on that right now. I haven't seen it yet, though. So. It's sad. Um, is it good, though? Yeah. They throw, they yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. But we'll, I don't want to talk about him right now because that's a whole other lecture. So we'll get to him when we talk about civil rights and so forth. But anyway, um, so sports. So baseball was really, was really big at the time. Who was the, like, the Jerry Maguire? Is it Jerry Maguire? The baseball player? The guy caught for drugs? No. Oh. Something Maguire. Is it Bobby Maguire? Mark Maguire. Okay. So yeah, who would have been the, the famous player? Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth. Okay, David. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was just waiting for him to that, get with his sentence. Babe Ruth, okay. So Babe Ruth, people went to watch him. And what's amazing about Babe Ruth, Babe Ruth is that, you know, they had regular baseball bats with wood, and this guy still was killing it, you know? Although he was a drunk. I don't know if you guys knew that or not. You watch a movie on that as well. Anyway. So people went to baseball games. What else did they do? <coughs> what else did they do for fun? I don't know. If, say it again. They would listen to the radio. Um, the radio was invented around this time period, okay? In fact, by 1929, if you look at your notes, 40% of households had a radio. Now, 
Today, back then, the radio would have been like the internet when it first came out in the 1990s for us. Maybe not for you, but for me. Okay? Um, it was huge. It was, I mean, sound was coming out of this box. People would, if you ever look at pictures back then, people would, would sit around, they'd be laying on the ground, they'd be looking at the radio, listening to it. Now, that kind of sounds dumb to us, because, you know, why would you look at the radio because you're hearing it? But people were fascinated by it, you know? And so, think about this. Think about everything. So, if I invent the radio, right, the only way that other people can listen to the radio is if they have radios, right? But radios don't go to radios. How does it work? You have to have a broadcasting station. So that signal has to go up to something, some kind of antenna that has to be built. So an entire system has to be built around this one invention, the radio. Same with the car, right? If I invent a car, I'm not going to invent uh, uh, road systems and, and traffic lights and laws and, ev and gas stations. So these one inventions, these inventions are huge, and they're going to make a huge difference. And, and not, not only that, the radio is going to help communicate messages from the government to the people, right? Now, you guys know the most famous thing that happened with the radio, or one of the most old famous things that happened? The War of the Worlds. What happened with that? Oh, yeah. They thought it was actual, like, every... Yeah, they thought the, the aliens were coming down and actually taking over the world. People committed suicide. They attacked the radio station after they found out it was, it was fake. And then, 30 days later, they ran it again, and they ran all these disclaimers beforehand. This is not real. Okay? And then they, that's when they actually went back and destroyed the, uh, the radio station because people don't listen. They don't read directions and all those things, you know? So, the radio was huge, and by 1929, 40% of the households had it. Okay. Um, all right, other things that were going on, music and dancing within that realm. Um, the phone, you guys know what the phonograph is? You ever see that crazy, like, like, record player that has that big cornucopia, like, speaker? That's a phonograph, okay? And people could start listening to music and stuff like that at home if, if, if they had the money to buy one. There were, other, there were artists that came out during this time period that were very famous and are still famous. Now, my, my dad um, my dad was old. I say that because he was older than everybody else's dad. So he was born in 1924, right? He was in World War II. I'll tell you about him later. <clears throat> and when he was growing up, it was all big bands. So, you, you know, you'd listen to the radio, but if you, you wanted to go out, you would go to a club and you'd dance. Like, they would have these dance ball, ballrooms and stuff like that. And these guys, Irvin Berlin, George Gershwin, all these guys were the ones that were playing at the time. So I know about that because when I was growing up, my dad used to sing these songs. And because he's kind of crazy, you know. He would sing these songs, and he, you know what I mean? And, um, but that's how famous they were because they, they've still lasted until now. We don't listen to them, but, you know, it's classic. Duke Ellington, Louis Armstrong, um, also... Founders of modern jazz, um, and in, when we're talking about the jazz days, we're also talking about the Harlem Renaissance, like I talked to you guys yesterday, all right? Bessie Smith, I'll give you a little story here, and I don't know the, I can't remember all my facts straight, but I can give you the, the, the general story. So Bessie Smith was a, she was called the Empress of the Blues. She was an African-American woman that sang the blues, and FDR um, I can't remember if it was his first inauguration or one of his other ones, because remember, he was president several times, right? <clears throat> so he, he was going to have, or actually I should say his wife, Eleanor Roosevelt, wanted her to sing the national anthem at the uh, inauguration. But what was wrong? She was black. So why couldn't she do that? It was a segregated society back then, right? And Ellen, I love Eleanor Roosevelt. She did a lot of good things. And she propelled civil rights not only for women but for a lot of different people. So she said, I don't care what you say. If you're not going to let her sing at the Capitol, then we're going to go over here and have the inauguration, and she's going to sing at the uh, Jefferson Memorial. And that's exactly what happened. And so it was kind of one of those two steps forward things and one step back, right? But every step forward is a step forward, right? So um, just a little 